Hi, I'm Michael McNamee with Secure Edge Networks. I'm the senior network engineer here over the mobility practice, wireless mobility practice. Uh, today we're going to talk about wireless design and specifically how it pertains to doing a capacity design. So historically in, in wireless design, um, we've traditionally just done coverage. That's X number of APs for a given area and it provides this much signal level. That was fairly easy to do, but as wireless evolved and the devices evolved, we've now had to address capacity uh, concerns. And so capacity really necessitates um, gathering more information to understand what we're actually designing for. So when we talk about capacity, we're looking at the number of devices in a given space. So that makes or gives us an understanding of how much demand there's going to be on the network. On top of that, it's helpful to understand or almost critical to understand what types of devices that we're addressing, whether we're doing laptops, tablets, phones, and, and I'll kind of address that and, and explain why that's necessary. And on top of that, what the device capabilities are, whether they're a, a single stream MIMO device, a single spatial stream, or a three spatial stream MIMO device, or even if the, the devices can do one or two bands or both. Um, and then understanding the applications that the devices are going to be using uh, within the space. So going back to the device capabilities, um, I'll give you an example of why that's necessary or why that's impactful uh, to the design um, for us. So let's take for instance a high-end 3x3, three spatial stream MIMO AC laptop. Um, Let's just say for the, the example, we're going to use three megabits as our requirement for bandwidth per device. Could be because of the application uh, that the, the users are running, they're going to need about three megabits each. And then we take the throughput, which for this uh, example, we're going to use 225. The, the AC laptop, if everything is, is optimal, this can do up to 450 megabit, but we're never gonna see that potential data rate as actual throughput because wireless is a shared medium and it's half duplex. So we're only gonna see about half of that, which is what we use as a rule of thumb. So let's take that three megabit divided by the 225 megabit uh, throughput rate that we're gonna get on the laptop. And it gives us 1.3% of airtime. That tells us that this one single laptop is going to take up to 1.3% 1 of the airtime on the wireless network. And then if we multiply that times the number of devices, let's say these laptops are in an auditorium, there's 100 users, so this is going to give us an understanding of how much, lap, uh, how much airtime these devices are going to consume. So 100 times 1.3% gives us 130%. That tells us that we're going to need at least two dual band access points to address all those users. Now, on the flip side, if we look at an AC tablet, which is a single stream spatial device, we're still using that same three megabit requirement. The tablet only is gonna be able to do about 75 megabit throughput. Uh, the data rate connection on the wireless uh, device is gonna be about 150. We're only gonna realize half of that. So that gives us 75 megabit. We divide that out and that tells us that that tablet's going to take up to 4% of airtime all by itself. Already we can see that that's three times what the laptop would consume. We multiply that out times 100 devices in the auditorium and that tells us they're going to consume 400% of the airtime, which means we need four dual band access points. So, Understanding the, the devices, their capabilities, and the applications really becomes critical for the capacity design uh, so that we're addressing those specific needs and demands. The other side of it is we have specific objectives that we want to um, be cognizant of and make sure that we're not inflicting more harm on ourselves as we're doing the design uh, than we're resolving. So number one is we want to add spectrum space. That could be the channels that we're using and the frequencies. Um, in certain frequencies, we only have an, a certain number of channels and we don't want to use those more than one time in uh, a certain space uh, so that we don't increase the, the co-channel uh, 
contention. We also want to improve spectrum efficiency, so the behavior or the performance of the spectrum in that space. We also want to minimize the con channel contention, so uh, between channels we want to have a cell that's using a different channel than the one that we're on. And if there is any type of overlap, we want to make sure that there's at least 20 dB of separation between us so that our client devices aren't um, sharing the same RF domain and having to increase their wait time because of another uh, cell using the same channel. And then we want to mitigate channel interference, either uh, Wi-Fi uh, contention that we've imposed on ourselves because we're trying to place too many access points using the same channels in the same space, or even non-Wi-Fi interferes uh, that sometimes we don't have as much control over, uh, but we need to make sure that, um, that we're addressing those. So after we, we consider all these different points for the wireless LAN design, um, we want to want to touch on uh, these different considerations. Number one, just adding more APs to a space is not a, a solution um, that can actually create uh, more deficiency than it than it solves. It's important to understand the client device mix, what devices, what applications, what's their capabilities. We want to understand the environment. So, is this a classroom? Is it an auditorium? Is it an arena? How dense are the users in the area? What is the construction materials? Um, you know, what of our where of our mounting or placing for the access points going to happen? And then we want to always design for coverage first. We want to make sure that the signal level for a laptop is at least neg seventy five, and a mobile device is neg sixty seven. So, you know, even between the devices, they require a different level of RSSI or signal level. And then once we've addressed coverage and then we couple that with our proper capacity design, then we can achieve good performance for our wireless LAN. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions or you want to learn more about wireless LAN design, reach out to us at secureedgenetworks.com forward slash blog and have a good one. 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 Have a good one.